हरे कृष्ण रामराज्य प्रभु थैंक यू फॉर दैट वेरी एलॉन्गेटेड एंड मोस्टली अननेसेसरी अटेम्प्ट एनीवे सो लेट्स मूव ऑन नॉट टू बॉल यू डोंट नीड एनीथिंग एल्स आई वाज रिक्वेस्टेड टू स्पीक समथिंग अबाउट हरि नाम टू दिस एस्टीम्ड ऑडियंस मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर Uh, more senior to me and i am like kind of in that sense uh, might not uh, certainly not the uh, right candidate to speak on uh, in this assembly um, because mostly uh, you have got more experience uh, of krishna consciousness than i do uh, i uh, what i will attempt is to share uh, some of my thoughts and uh, expect you to uh, give a feedback on that maybe that will be more helpful for me because um after all uh, i am i am i'm 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 a learner i'm not a, I, i teach that that's like everybody do, does something in iskon but that's not what i came for so generally uh, mostly learning is is uh, my forte coach said brother so um since uh, this is all uh, about uh, hari naam and this is our, our whole uh, movement and our whole uh, trajectory and our uh, if i can if i can um, say that our whole pranali said the our said the pranali is parikshit mahamantra so uh, as mahaprabhu speaks about vidya vadu jeevanam so the, 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 the chanting and the chant uh, now because this this august assembly most of you are more as experienced than i am so what i have understood like i will present in front of you and please correct me where wherever i am wrong i have understood whatever that this conception of vidya vadu jeevanam that's that's the, um, uh, the 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 next level conception of hari krishna maha mantra um inattentive chanting as i understand doesn't uh, simply mean like an in- inattentive hearing while you are chanting not paying attention it also means inattentive conception actually uh, just a patch patch conception of hari krishna maha mantra what that means and what that leads to um, so uh, i i i i have uh, this is this is this have come to that um, what um, uh, like when we we are uh, we we are in the know of the process of the chanting then the further uh, to move ahead that the this important what's more important or as important uh, what the chanting means to us what is the conception of uh, hari krishna mahamantra it's not an empty empty conception as we understand that um, i just like sanatan goswami uh, often quotes that the uh, milk touched by the lips of the serpent is poisonous the same thing if you understand then when the this hari krishna mahamantra is chanted by a non devotee has got a different effect so then that means what is the different thing is the mantra is the same that is the conception is what is different between our conception and a conception of somebody who is who has not pledged his allegiance krishna so this hari krishna maha mantra as i understand is pledge pledging our allegiance to krishna that is the basic conception and then uh, the other deeper aspects of chanting comes and that comes along with just like when we talk about um uh, nama parad as as i have understood so nama parad in that sense directly directly if you will say in that sense has got nothing to do with chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra because it doesn't happen when we chant rather uh, most of that happens when we do not chant that means it has got more to do with the lifestyle we lead uh, along with and that has to be in a conjunction with the, the type of uh, 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 spirituality the spiritual path we are um, uh, we are following so that means all those things boils down to the same thing 
what is the conception of Hare Krishna Mahamantra? What is the conception of Krishna in our hearts? What is the conception of spiritual life? You see, Bhakti, Bhakti Rasabrit Sindhu, this is uh, what I have understood. I, because um, as, uh, as, as again, a, a poor, a sloppy uh, chanter uh, myself, uh, it is it is it is my my conviction uh, that I'm sharing that the more uh, uh, I focus on the different limbs of bhakti that gives uh, that supports that actually augments the 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 main uh, uh, the the primary limb of of the uh, of our uh, of our um, uh, Krishna consciousness, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. I have seen, uh, I have also observed over the over the years, just like uh, everybody having a question, oh, how how do I improve my chanting? That the are the two year old uh, sadaka is going to the five year old asking the same question, and he gives him uh, uh, something to satisfy him uh, him. And then he moves on. The five-year-old uh, uh, devotee who's chanting at a Krishna Maha Mantra moves to a 10-year-old asking the very same question. And the same question keeps passing on. And maybe, maybe then even after 10 years, 15 years, 20 years of chanting, uh, we're not possibly getting it. Uh, mercy being the primary uh, uh, ingredient in it. From our, our side, I would say, Conception, uh, uh, maybe it's time that we look look into and we kind of uh, ponder about this, that uh, whether the whole conception of chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra uh, is the one uh, uh, we are into or is something is lacking, seriously lacking. What, is, what might be lacking? It's just like when we talk about bhakti, uh, uh, she, uh, we, we address her as she, the female uh, denomination, Bhakti Devi. That means a person, a person will have limbs. That's why in Krishna consciousness, we have limbs of bhakti. So within this limbs of bhakti, as we understand, uh, primary five uh, limbs, the Panjanga bhakti, they have got special mention. And what, what is special in them? The speciality is that even a little association with any of them can give us a glimpse of what is prema or what is bhava. The, the target of sadhana bhakti is not prema. The target of sadhana bhakti is bhava bhakti because prema is beyond the reach of sadhana. And bhava is also in, in a way beyond the reach of sadhana. So then by sadhana, we can move up to at max, at max at the level of asakti. And then we have to stop and pray and wait for the mercy to come down on us uh, and then there's power bhakti, and then certainly it's prema bhakti. But the glimpse, the abhas, the the shadow of that prema bhakti can be availed uh, for a few moments by the association of any of these five. So these five they are the primary. But then what about the others? It's like if I ask uh, uh, any of uh, uh, the friends sitting over here. Uh, would you like to like say for example the most uh, important part of my body maybe my head okay fine can you would you like to uh, part away with the toe uh, most certainly not so then toe has got its own importance so uh, in my uh, experience of krishna consciousness i have seen the more you focus on uh, the whole package of Krishna consciousness, which is the whole Bhakti Devi, which is all the 64 limbs, as much as possible, then you don't have to separately worry about the quality of chanting. So uh, the more, uh, it's, it's important for, at least I, 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 I feel more important for devotees uh, who who cannot uh, who do not visit the temple or cannot visit the temple every day, and uh, and do not have deities at home, they will not even miss a charnabhri daily, and they don't know that it's missing. 
people who do not come to the temple or people who do not have deities at home will not even know that they, they miss the Charnamrit every day. They won't know that, that they are missing, circumambulating the deities every day. They won't, they won't, they won't understand the relevance of uh, offering a flower to the deity every day. So these, all these different limbs of bhakti, they come together to give strength to chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So that is the whole package. Maybe that is what uh, I, this is my experience. I'm like, whatever little I gathered. Um, because otherwise, if, if you talk about, uh, let's, let's see the, 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 the verse, Hare Name Vakevalam, uh, in a piecemeal way, not in the holistic way. So the Hare Name Vakevalam talks about Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It doesn't talk about Prasadam. Why so much importance? Why so much stress given on prasadam? Just go out and eat whatever you like. Just chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And we do that. And does it work? It doesn't actually work. Because everything works in tandem. The whole process, as I have understood, chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra works when we take the whole package and then let the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra do its part and... Uh, that is what helps us to develop the proper conception behind the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Like maybe for people who are just uh, right uh, novice in Krishna consciousness, uh, Rama can mean anything. Can mean Parashuram. It can uh, uh, Raghupati Ram. It can mean Balara. That's that. That's fine. That's just fine. But people who are 20 years into Krishna consciousness, 15 years into Krishna consciousness, they need to know and they need to imbibe what the word Rama means to them. That is according to their target, according to their uh, uh, sadhana, their target. Sadhana bhavi bejaha siddhya pai bejaha. So that's what Nartam Das Thakur says, whatever we will be, the conception we will have during chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That is what, and that Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it means the whole sadhana, whole, whole 64 limbs, that whatever, with whatever concept we are practicing it, we'll get that. So maybe now, uh, after 15 or 20 years of chanting, it is high time that we uh, focus and we determine what is the target. And that's not just that uh, all of us are just going back home, back to God. So for what? But why are we going back home, back to God? What is it they, uh, there for us out there? So that conception of Krishna consciousness is the holistic idea behind chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as I, I have also heard from other senior devotees out here. Um, and that is what I feel, that's what my little understanding of Krishna consciousness. Um, thank you, thank you very much. I want to take more of your time. And maybe uh, uh, you, you can correct me or give me your feedback. So I'm all ears. Thanks a lot, Bimla Prashad Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Uh, this was really looking uh, Mahamantra from a totally different angle uh, with a holistic picture. And, uh, you know, uh, this is so important and that each and every uh, part of our Krishna conscious activity becomes so important for us. Uh, uh, and that will actually enhance the quality uh, of chanting. And, you know, it will really bring in the, the, the taste of chanting. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Bimla Prashad Prabhu. So, just want to check if anyone online has any question or any comment or, you know. Prabhu, I have a couple of questions just to clarify. Yeah, please go ahead, Shant, Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, the first question, Prabhuji has said that <clears throat> more you focus on the complete package, the quality of chanting will naturally improve. Does it mean that we have that uh, mind control chart on limbs of bhakti? where we do the uh, hearing, reading, and taking only prasadam and following regulative principles. That, does it mean that? Or is all, it, I mean, yes, Prabhuji. All, all of it. 
Or I don't know what, what chart you have. Rupa Goswami has given a chart in Nectar Devotion, chapter number six. That's a whole chart. You can find that. You will find the 64 limbs of bhakti and all of that. So uh, and this is the whole package. It's the whole package. See, I mean, uh, ch chanting, uh, see, every limb of bhakti has got its own part to play. It's just like the, the human body, most of you are doctors by profession. We cannot replace vitamins, vitamins with proteins, can you? So it's the same thing. So every every limb of bhakti is meant for a particular uh, part of devotional service to be enhanced and to be optimized. So and this, uh, that's that's well, like, everybody has its own role to play. So uh, Rupa Goswami won't be bothering us with giving all the sixty-four limbs of bhakti if like anything can 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 replace anything else. So and if you see the. The, the, the lives of any of our acharya, we cannot, there is no such example that they, uh, uh, they, 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 they executed any limb of bhakti at the cost of everything else. So that's, that, is, that, is the, that is the big, that is the strongest evidence to support them. That uh, when we, we go to the platform of Raga Bhakti, what happens is that some of the limbs of the bhakti, which uh, it, because it is very uh, the, 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 the devotional service is very much individualized and customized in that stage. Those limbs of bhakti, which uh, brings you closer to Krishna, you means like you, not not all of us, me in in, in particular, I increase that part. But whatever brings me to Krishna, closer to Krishna might not be what brings you closer to Krishna. Maybe the, another part of the uh, devotional service, another limb of devotional service brings you closer to Krishna. So you increase that part. That's exactly how Raga Bhakti is like, you know, like uh, uh, practiced once we have got, uh, we passed the stage of Nishta. So, uh, and uh, we have got the uh, proper conception to enter into Raga Bhakti. Otherwise, the very bhakti that just continues. So uh, that's exactly uh, what I was actually inferring, and that that's basically I felt that I can talk about because this is an August assembly. Almost everybody is senior to me, so that was my thought on that. That's what I have understood. Thank you, Prabhuji. Shannu Prabhuji, do you have any other question? You said you have. You are on mute. Uh, I have one more question. So Prabhuji said that uh, while we <laughs> take the five limbs of bhakti and any little association with them can take us all the way till asakti, but uh, the bhava... No, no, no. Very, yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I was telling, I mean, I mixed the two things together. Uh, what I was saying, thank you for um, allowing me to clarify. Uh, I was saying that the five limbs of bhakti can get you a glimpse of what is prema bhakti for a moment, for a moment's time. And then it might not come for years. And that is the generally I have, whatever I have found or I speak to people, the, most of the devotees who have survived the initial years of Krishna consciousness, they remember that they had maybe they have joined a kirtan and for, for a split second they felt that like it's like I am almost there and that taste that glimpse never came back to us for years to come but I remember that in the beginning stage of my uh, Krishna consciousness when I was just being introduced I got that in the kirtan or in a prasadam but I had a uh, kept such a captivating gusher of the deities and never again I felt like that Never again. So it's like that sometimes. So this, all these five limbs of bhakti. When we came to Vrindavan, I can never forget that Vrindavan was different. Now I come year after year, I don't feel the same. But that, but, but that's the, the, for a split second, I, when I, I was in Vrindavan, when I remember that. So that is what is called abhas. So that is the abhas. And you might not get that for years. And that abhas is necessary all the sadhakas and they do get that abhas by the mercy of Krishna so that everybody knows that there is such a thing because if you don't 
actually have any idea that there is such a thing. So we would be making fools of ourselves by practicing for something which have you have no experience of. So that is the Abhas thing. But while we practice the sadhana bhakti, it's like as um, the, the definition of sadhana bhakti given by Rupa Goswami and Bhakti Rasamrit Singh, Priti Bhavas uh, Bhavet Sadhya, like the verse was like that. And it says that which gives rise to bhava. That is called sadhana bhakti. So then that sadhana bhakti, which takes us up till the level of asati by practicing, and then the bhava will descend, will descend in it at its own accord, at its own sweet time, by the permission, by the mercy of Krishna. So then we are like okay on the uh, threshold of prema. So that's what it is. Thank you, Shanmukha uh, Prabhu. Thanks, Shanmukh Prabhuji, for asking this question. Thank you. And th thanks, Bhimla Prashad Prabhuji, for clarifying. It's important. Okay, thank you. So just want to check if anyone online has any other comment or question. Prabhuji, like, uh, there's, there's one question from my end, like, uh, there, there are many people on this call, you know, who are new also, new to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, they're I, like, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, not, I'm, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that it's like uh, Ram, Ram Raja Prabhu's uh, friends out there. And yeah. of course, I mean, we can have all friends. Of course, it's, I, yeah. I thought that's like the same batch. So. Yes. So we are there, like, we are, many of us are, you know, uh, his batchmates, his friends, but uh, many of them are new, like people we are preaching to. Uh, so for them, like we generally say that chanting is the most important thing, right? To start with. And um, so how to understand that thing? See, that is, that is, uh, that's a very, very interesting, actually, uh, question. Uh, Chanting is the most important thing, but that doesn't mean that it is at the expense of everything else. What is most important in my life is like, it's generally that this, this binary, to tackle this binary idea uh, uh, in, in devotees when we preach to is actually uh, the responsibility of the senior preacher. Because generally people likes to understand things in binaries at the cost of anything else, others. You know, what is most important uh, is what you say and what, what they hear is or all the all else or all the others are not important. You may not have said that, but that's how they hear things. So we, uh, as preachers also, we have to understand that uh, what is said is uh, not uh, is, is important, but what is more important is what is heard. So generally, this is how they, they see things. They see things in the binary, there's things, things like, okay, fine. What is spiritual life? Oh, that's the opposite of material life. I'm sorry, actually, it's not true. Opposite of material life is material life. Spiritual life is different from material life. It's not the opposite of spiritual life. So in the same way, when we talk about, when we are uh, highlighting something, doesn't mean everything else has got no significance or value attached to it. So uh, that is the that is the uh, that is the duty of the preacher to see that uh, what is more important. Maybe that means you give it more importance. That means if when you say this is more important and other things are important and this is more important, so nothing is expendable in Krishna consciousness. So uh, that is that that is that that works because and that's not very difficult for them to understand when when they see that. Uh, uh, when they come into a, an assembly like that and they learn to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra on the beads or practice it on the beads, but what brought them into Krishna consciousness may not be the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra on the beads. There were other aspects of Krishna consciousness that brought them into Krishna consciousness and they are still significant. So uh, uh, that's my view of uh, what I, I understand. And I, I see that over a period of time, this uh, uh, binary view of Krishna consciousness does more harm than good because we start neglecting all the other 
uh, limbs of devotional service. It's just like the same thing. If we start neglecting all the different bodily parts at the expense of one part of the body, the whole body suffers. Similarly, after, after long, even after spending long years in Krishna consciousness, trying to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, trying to quote and perfect it, doesn't work because the, the process is not so perfect because we are doing it at the expense of the whole package. So that's my understanding. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thanks for elaborating on that. And, you know, it, it really makes sense when you gave the example of head versus toe. And, uh, and when also, you know, you, you said that if someone is deficient of a vitamin, uh, a protein supplement is not going to help. So we have to have, you know, a balanced diet. Uh, we have to have a balanced diet. We have to have, uh, you know, uh, everything. Uh, but yes, uh, undoubtedly, there are things which are more important, right? Certainly. So, thanks, thanks for clarifying that. And, and there is there's one more related thing, like... Uh, uh, like the devotees uh, who, who who say that Prabhupada said that like chanting is the most important thing. Yes, it is. And and that yeah, 99% of our spiritual advancement depends on chanting, while 1% depends on, you know, every other thing we do in a spiritual life. And that 1% also is to improve or enhance the quality of our chanting. So can can you can you clarify that also, please? See, I mean, there are many, if I, if I, if I can take a look at it. Prabhuji, you're not ordered just for me. Uh -huh. Is it better now? Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just taking the liberty to uh, uh, say a few things about there are many what an unquote Prabhupada says in ISKCON. Right. And that's that's we have to be very careful about. Like when Prabhupada, what Prabhupada said is uh, uh, as important and to whom Prabhupada said, where Prabhupada said, what is the context? So it's just like uh Prabhu, why 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 what is wrong with eating chocolate? Because Prabhupada said that not to eat chocolate. Okay, that was not my question. I said, why? You tell me who. I didn't ask that question, who said that. I said, why it is, uh, why do we don't, why, why we do not eat chocolate? So that's the kind of preaching sometimes we end up with. So that's basically to basically silence that person by not answering the question, but giving him a name of the authority to, to silence that person. It doesn't work. Similarly, they, these, uh, these, these citations have to also be seen in the light of what Prabhupada did. In that sense, if we understand, I understand that these are like some statements are so much etched into us, rubbed into us, that it's very difficult to get over the different nuances. Chanting is the 99% of my life. And so that, like, that if that is the quote, uh, and I am still to find that quote, I have heard this other one of the most popular quotes in ISKCON still to find that quote, uh, even if it uh, even if it exists. So now, what is this one person was not explained by Prabhupada? Getting my point? You won't find what is the one percent of it's not explained. That's exactly how the mind works. The whole of the rest of the bhakti is one person. Maybe I would say, if I say that that one person is the mercy of the Krishna, of Krishna, is reciprocation. How do you respond to that? So then it's like uh, those things, all the statements have to be taken in the proper context. Why, why would Prabhupada bother himself with establishing the whole system of ISKCON if it's this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra? What about, what is the first thing we do in, in a morning program? We chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra first, or we, uh, we go for the Arti first. Why not just chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and the Brahma Murta and then just do, do away with the worship and then uh, who does the less care for the neophytes, maybe? That's not exactly how it works. That's not exactly how it works. When we, when we hear uh, Haridas Thakur chanting one nine, uh, three lakh names and we conclude that that takes 22 hours because we take 22 hours. There is no book which says that Haridas Thakur took 22 hours to chant three lakh names. 
On the contrary, we see that Haridas Thakur is taking part in the Sankirtan, going, going door to door preaching, doing uh, Harikatha as well. Where does he find time for that? So this is our understanding of those acharyas, is our understanding of limited understanding of the unlimited, if I may say so. So we have to see that, that as we grow in Krishna consciousness, we would be uh, encouraged, feel encouraged to take the wholesome package. How can I please Krishna? Nobody, nobody sits there uh, with a the japa bead in Golok Vrindavan and chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But there is the Hare Krishna Mahamantra out there, but there is service out there. So for this whole Krishna consciousness, this, this, we have to understand if the process is coming from Krishna, if it is coming from Golok Vrindavan, then it has to reflect what goes on in Golok Vrindavan. So this all the 64 limbs, you see, this is exactly what goes on in Golok Vrindavan. That's why it is like that, that but, but that, that's, that's what basically uh, proves or uh, gives credence to the statement that what we are practicing is exactly what we are doing out there in Golok Vrindavan is not a practice anymore. There are no slobs in Golok Vrindavan sitting with the japa beat and chanting their rounds. Somebody will come and kick you and say, do something useful for Krishna. <laughs> so that is the whole idea. And the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra must lead us to the service of the Hare Krishna, of, of the person addressed in Krishna, uh, in, in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So that the whole thing has been given as a practice, so that we can perfect the whole practice where we, we, are, we are serving it, that the chanting is the service and the service is the chanting and the service is the service and the chanting is the service. When I, when I, when I, am, when I am bathing Krishna, that is chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. When I'm chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, I'm bathing, Hare Krishna, I'm Krishna bathing Krishna with the names. So it has to, that conception has to grow up to, up to that. And then the whole package will make sense. The Hare Krishna Mahamantra is not given to us to put the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra to the level that puts us in a state of suspended animation. The idea is to actually connect us to Krishna. Like what, what, is, what does it actually, this is this, see, these are metaphors. What does it mean when the Krishna uh, dances on our tongue? But the Krishna doesn't have a better place to uh, dance to? So it's like Vrindavan, Krishna is bored with Vrindavan. No, the, the idea is that which, that's a metaphor to understand that this is like how it's, how it is gonna be. But the idea is to completely drown ourselves in the whole bhakti rasa. That because that's that's a sindhu, that's a that's an ocean. So we'll do that. So then, then we then we that, that is the amrita which are looking from from the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Charitam. So that is the idea. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. I, I would say that uh, you know Ramraj Prabhuji rightly introduced yourself and the way you have influenced him. I think so. This particular talk would definitely influence me for life to come. So personally, it is. It it will be very helpful for me for sure. Thank you very much, Ravi. Just want to take. I'm if... bold enough. I'm 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 bold no, no, we have just four minutes to go, Prabhuji. Like, we still have four minutes to go. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. This is Bal Mukandadas. Okay. Yes. Just, just a verification. So, um, based on what you shared today, so conversely, if I am struggling with chanting, most likely I'm lacking in, uh, in other bhakti practices during the hours when I don't chant. Exactly, that's what I, I, I believe. And uh, if you, if you uh, mostly, uh, like my experience is that if I sit down with this, 
Sixth chapter of Bhakti Rasa Amrit Sindhu, which was the best of the 64. Them's a bhakti. If I start taking, you will see you can uh, 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 you won't have much to take around. So then that certainly if, if if the whole package is not there, see, uh, I can okay, I can I can only embellish the example which I by use. Say, for example, Bhakti Devi is a beautiful girl, must be a beautiful girl, otherwise, Bhakti Devi, as I understand, of spiritual personality must be beautiful. Uh, Say, for example, the most prominent part of the body, like whenever we see anyone, what is the what is the most prominent part of the body uh, our eyes goes to? The face, right? It's only after the face do we like care to look at the other bodily parts. Well, let's uh, say that the Hare Krishna Mantra is the face of Bhakti Devi. And the rest of the 63 limbs are the different parts of the body. To chop off, say for example, chop off the leg of, so of a beautiful girl. So that the beautiful girl is still beautiful, but people take pity on her. You see, what a pity, she doesn't have a leg. So now we chop off the other limbs one by one to the extent that only the, uh, it's there up till the neck, everything else is chopped off. How does the beautiful girl looks like? Beautiful girl looks like a witch. The same, if it like, if it, the face at the expense of in all the other limbs of the body can be as dangerous. What if if I ask the face to do the job of the hand to lift something? Might be we might be able to lift something with our teeth. That's not what it's meant for. So that's why the whole body, the Acharyas have given us the whole body. Krishna has given us the whole body. So take advantage, if you take advantage, if you, uh, that's my experience, my personal experience, that's what I'm sharing because many of us, uh, of you are seniors. To take, to take the whole package, it will work. Why not? Thank you. Thanks, Prabhuji. Hi, Prabhuji, thank you. Hey, Prabhuji, if you have a, another two minutes, like I have a devotee with me, like who's new to Krishna consciousness, and he has a question. Please. Yeah. Prabhuji, uh, Hare Krishna. Adhan. One uh, question. Uh, is chanting part of tapasya or austerity? What, how do you uh, basically... Uh, None of them. None of them. Chanting is part of ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, that's not a statement. It's a fact. Because like, if, if, if this is how you see the chanting, it will it appear to you like that. If you, if you use chanting as an austerity, it will become austerity for you. If you chanting, you take chanting as your tapas, it will become a tapas for you. It will never become a source of joy for you. Mm -hmm. So this the approach is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roji. Thanks a lot for your time. It was really very, very insightful talk and we'll really appreciate if you can come more often. Thank I, you I, I was just what I was just hoping to get more feedback from the devotees. <laughs> and I don't know. I was just thinking what did I say wrong that make everybody muted. So, <laughs> maybe next time maybe next time uh, devotees can we move uh, can can give me more feedback because most of you are senior out here. I okay maybe not the juniors but at least seniors please please and I don't get that opportunity very often. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prabhu. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank all you of very you. much. Thank you.